So I'd like to welcome everybody here to Redesign. Uh, this is our second blab. Um, and uh, it's a good opportunity for us all to get together and you know chat and um, and maybe other people might get interested too and join us. Who knows? But um, today I thought we'd talk about uh, something near and dear to all of our hearts and uh, very simple, but I find there's a lot of misperception as to what it is exactly. And that is, what is design? So, think he can handle that topic? What is design? I think so. All I think right, we well, all Catherine, have some very clear opinions on this. <laughs> what does design mean to mean to, to you? I think uh, the best synonym for design would be strategy. You know, because a lot of people have this conception that design is like you always say, Paul, decoration. Mm -hmm. And it's like arbitrary choices. And that's just couldn't be further from the truth is everything that goes into a design is all thought out and it's done for a reason. None of this is, you know, just kind of haphazardly thrown together because you think it looks good. Right. Steven, you want to add to that? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, that's such a, like you really got me thinking. I'm thinking, wow, you know, what is design? That's really hard to say. I mean, I think the design really largely depends on the application. So, right. you know, I mean, you know, there's web design, there's like print design. I think it really depends on that. But, you know, more than anything, it's capturing, it, it's communication, really. I mean, I, it's got to communicate something, an idea, um, it's a call to action, something. I mean, it's it's some some form of communication is probably the best I can come up with. I don't know how that works. Hey, Welcome, hey, look. Craig. Welcome, Craig. What's up, Craig? Hi. How are you? Oh, good. Can you hear me okay? You sound good. You sound good. What's oh, Matt, wait a second. My gardeners are out there. I got to close things up. <laughs> okay. yeah, Sorry, carry on, Stephen. So, Stephen, you were hey. saying? How are you? Yeah, I was just saying, like, design. I mean, I, I think it, you know, um, it's really communication. I, that's, I think that's the best I can come up with. Um, you know, it, and it's defined so many different ways. You can look at all the greats, you know, I mean, when you look at design, I mean, is it, is it, is it expressed in a painting is it expressed, I think in the commercial application, which is primarily where we mostly probably live. Um, I think if you're unable to communicate that, um, that idea or what you're trying to get across, I think it's going to be difficult. Right. Definitely. So Craig, the topic of discussion here is what is design? Um, you know, it, it's, uh, it, it <laughs> yeah, a good cup of coffee. Uh, it's nine o'clock in the morning to anyone who doesn't know. Yeah, we can tell, people. Craig. <laughs> so still waking up, I guess, over there. Um, so, uh, what is design? It's deceptively simple, you know, but it's actually a complex question, I think. But there's so much, um, you know, uh, misunderstanding out there as to what design is. Um, Maybe not amongst the design group, you know, so much, obviously, but, um, you know, anyone who runs a company or uh, is in marketing even, I think there's, you know, even there, uh, people who deal with design all the time uh, don't always, I think, understand exactly what it's about. So, Craig, how would you define design? D design? Oh, it's a bit of eco. I can hear somebody. Uh, hello? 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 Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I'll carry on. It, it's just a little bit of feedback I can hear coming through. So I'm not sure where that's coming from. Okay. But in, in, in terms of design, design is a process. So I was thinking about it as I was rushing kind of to get my coffee um, and waking up and all of those sorts of things. Um, it's about taking an idea and then developing prototypes and and analyzing those prototypes and i'm just talking in the you know the the generic sense of the word as it stands in terms you know design in general mm -hmm. and, and and so looking at those prototypes and analyzing them or, or firstly taking the ideas and and then bringing those ideas together to to form a like a, a synthesis of ideas and then creating those prototypes, analyzing those prototypes, um, and then bringing, and then that going through a series of discussions or whatever to fine tune those prototypes. So you can, you're making refined prototypes until you get to the finished product. 
So what you're talking about, Craig, I think is function, right? Yeah, that's the process of design, if you like, I guess. But as um, Stephen said, I think it depends on exactly what type of design we're talking about, yeah. because design can be defined different ways depending on what. But I think in a nutshell, in a nutshell, you know, it solves a problem, right? Communication possibly is one. Um, the way something works is another, which is function. Um, you know, highlighting something, making something stand out, right? Uh, uh, influ inf influencing a reaction or a response. Um, sometimes, you know, it guides us, it leads the, the uh, way, like a signpost does, or even uh, different motifs that we might have on a website that guide the user through the experience. Uh, there's so many different things that design does, but there's always an objective, right? There's always a problem that it solves in a nutshell. It's certainly not just making things look nice. And I think that that's where a lot of people um, get hung up. Oh, sorry. I, I, I'm getting I, past that. Yeah. I was on the wrong track. I'm, yeah, I'm still waking up. <laughs> no, you're on the right track. You're on the right track. I'm wow. just trying to simplify the answer at this point a little bit. Um, yeah. Function, yeah. No, I, yeah, I think you're totally right about the, the objective point. I think that's where a lot of people that or maybe in marketing sort of side of it, like where you get a project and it's like the designer comes in at the final stage. It, we've all had that experience, right? And you're like, wait a minute, you know, how did this how did this get to this point without me being, you know, involved? Because you're such a key player in how everything is communicated and accomplishing whatever the project's objectives are, that the designer really should be involved in it every step of the way from planning to execution. And, you know, how are you going to understand the objective without the person who's going to be communicating it there, right? right? And that's why it's so important, I think, for people to just basically, first of all, understand what design is, right? right. Because if all they see it is decoration, then, of course, they're going to bring you in at the last, you know. Right. Make this pretty, you know. okay? Bye. <laughs> yeah, and, and also, yeah. I'd also say, too, you know, it's, it's amazing that you hear a lot of the same things. You know, when we talk about design, it's amazing how a lot of times people will say the same type of things. You know, can you make my logo bigger? Can you do this? Can you do that? Um, I think I think the other thing about design, when, when it applies to let's say a client or you know your whatever you're building for somebody, right? Somebody's paying you. You have a client. Um, they feel as though there's a there's this um, symbiotic relationship. There's this uh, imaginary partnership. Okay, so since they're paying you they can then tell you everything to do, right? So they're paying you for your expertise, and then they'll say, well, why don't we just make that blue like a black? And why don't we make this or that? And then what happens over time is that, you know, you get you get a piece that, okay, you know, it, it's, it satisfies the client, but does it really, you know, it, you, you get caught in that fine line, where do I say something? You know, look, guys, I can't do that. And then we get called these uh, prima donnas. You know, these guys that are like, you're a prima donna. You don't want to be changing your work and your art. But then there's a certain expertise that comes in where you know, okay, that line spacing doesn't work on that uh, on the text there. Um, you know, some, some basic rules that we're all pretty familiar with that non-designers are. So I think that kind of design, how it applies to other people, um, it, it, always, um, it always kind of makes me smile a little bit when they just feel as though that I'm paying you, I own you. And it's kind of funny. You know, I posted that cartoon earlier yeah. about the uh, about yeah. the. You know, it's so funny. It's like you never see that happen. No, you know, no, you like, never do. And you know that I think is one of the biggest problems that I've experienced in my career is uh, the different way that developers are treated versus designers. And I don't really understand why I've experienced animosity from developers because our jobs are so interrelated that it just seems bizarre to me that there would be developers that are not interested in design at all. You know, how can your, how can your code be executed properly if it's not well designed? And, and, you know, it just, it's just baffling to me on that level. And, and, you know, that cartoon is perfect because you're not just talking about it from, you know, the developer's point of view, but it also the bosses seem to, you know, kind of like feel that, you know, fuel that, that disconnect there and it's it's just confusing to me <laughs> that actually leads us to a future topic that i definitely want to delve deeper into um and uh and you also touched on last week's 
topic too, which was, I think, you know, how to help, how can we help our clients help us help them? <laughs> how, you know, what can clients give us? What can they provide to us that will help us do our jobs better that will actually help them? Um, so, you know, we start to get into all these other things, but it all starts with the core understanding or lack thereof of what design is. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I mean, a huge, that wouldn't really happen if people understood how design is a part of it every step of the way, you know? Right. And design, when I design something, I mean, I mean, actually the, the aesthetic part of it is, is, is an important part and it's critical, but yeah. it's really such a small part of my day to day, you know, right. as I work on a specific project, you know, it's really, it really starts with, um, helping to guide the client, um, and helping them define what their objectives are before I even get started. Right. And usually it means backing them up a little bit, you know, because they're ready to go design it. You know, yeah. um, I like the color red. Okay, great. But I need something else from you before I can really do my job, you know? And I think it's incumbent upon us to do that. Um, and, uh, you know, the more that they understand what it is all that goes into design, you know, I think then the better they're going to be able to give us the information that we need, respect us more. And maybe like what, um, you know, Stephen was saying, um, those kinds of situations won't happen so much where they say, isn't the customer always right? I mean, yes, if you sell shoes, definitely, <laughs> you know, I will do anything I can. I'll bend over backwards to please you. But design is different than that. And I actually had a client say those exact words when we got into a little bit of a you know, it got a little tense after a while. The client just didn't want to listen to what I had to say and um, wanted to do it her way. And, um, you know, she actually said those words. She she said, isn't the client always right? And I said, no, I'm sorry, but it doesn't work that way. No, you know? no. <laughs> I'll just, uh, I just want to bring you in. Know, I want to give you what you need, not necessarily what you want. Right. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm right. trying to give you what's going to accomplish your business objectives, right? Right, right. <laughs> Craig, um, sorry. I was just going to say, uh, Color Nine One One um, just made 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 a good point. You know that, uh, and, and okay. they say clients clients can help by defining uh, what their needs are more clearly. But they are hiring a designer, often uh, being uh, unable to verbalise their needs. And um, the, uh, it's really really important at the beginning of the design process before the design process, that there's a clearly designed, well, there's a clearly understood uh, need. You know, what, what, what's, what, 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 what is it, you know, what's the business all about? What, what's the, 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 the purpose of the design? Right. Uh, and, and so at the beginning of that, that, that's where it all starts, where we start to get a description of, 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 what it is that we're actually trying to achieve here. Mm -hmm. And if we're talking about a, a, a logo, you know, it's, it's about capturing the essence of, of that business uh, in, a, in a really simple, hope, you know, we try to do it in a really simple way so that it's, it's easily seen across a multitude of different media formats. Right. And so I, I talked about this in another blab that, if it's a hardware store, it doesn't necessarily literally have to be a hammer. Right. We're, we're trying to capture the essence of a hammer in, in, a, right. in, a, in a hardware store, maybe, if, if that's right. the case. But it's that collaboration between the client and the designer at the beginning of the process in defining, and, and even before the designer comes to, to the meeting, they have a clear understanding of of what they're trying to achieve here yeah and then the, the designer comes in and we can add our our you know we can put our our input into that as far as we understand you know where it could lead from a creative point of view definitely one of the articles that i actually shared in uh in the group on on g plus the other day um talked about something about how uh I think, uh, you know, it's like function that's skinned. It's like we start with function and then we skin it, right? So yes, it'll look great in the end. It'll be totally on brand, which is critically important and always lost by, you know, people that don't really know better. Um, 
but it all starts with function, you know? It all starts with, um, you know, solving whatever the objective is that we're trying to, you know, achieve. Well, I was going to ask all of you, I mean, you know, the other thing is like scope creep. How do you guys define, I mean, you find an agreement, um, your initial consultation or somebody you're working with, so you know, what generally happens is you, you, you agree to do X, right? You say like, okay, you map out whatever the project is. And all of a sudden, you know, well, then these other things creep into the mix. Uh, by the way, can we do this? And they all think it's covered in this general umbrella called whatever it is, your agreement, um, your initial, you know, whatever your, whatever your project is. And it's not always that case, right? So how do you guys personally deal with that um, on, on an ongoing basis? Like, Paul, how, how, do, how do you... How do you work with that when somebody starts throwing other things in? I mean, do you just come out and say, or do you define something up front? Yeah, I pretty much uh, define up front in the small small print also. Like I'll in in the uh, customized print, you know, I'll define what it is we talked about and what we're achieving for the cost that's allotted there, right? And then in the fine print, I'll also say that you know there may be additional charges if it goes above and beyond the original okay. agreement um, and things like that. Then I will also send updated either emails or proposal or um, you know estimates uh, if things start to veer too far away from the agreed upon uh, you know project. Uh, now some of that you know is built in. I mean, two or three rounds of changes, let's say, right. was always tra right. traditional, you know, on right. text changes and things like that, or you know, simple changes. But anything that uh, that means, you know, entirely new input or, uh, you know, additional uh, de deliverables, you know, will be um, priced out separately, you know, and updated accordingly. So that's the way I handle it. I think it's communication between us and the client also that's really important back and forth. As long as they know up front what they're dealing with, then I think they're usually okay with it. That's what I've found. How do you guys deal with it? Well, I just really like when Craig used the word collaborate. Mm -hmm. I, you know, in terms of working with clients, I think we should probably work on, you know, communicating that aspect of what we do to our clients because I think if we are seen as in a, in a collaborative role, some of these issues maybe will be easier to deal with if down the road there's additional, you know, charges or something like that. If the client really understands that you know, you're working together on this and it's not just you taking orders or you working endlessly on, you know, the same fee until they're satisfied with every single pixel. You know, that's mm -hmm. that's not a collaboration. That's like a, you know, that, that's like some sort of masochistic thing. You right. know, that we, that's not productive for anyone involved, client or designer or the project, right? Exactly. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, Craig. Look, can I just be up front and say I, I don't do contracts. <laughs> I don't do them. Okay. I, maybe it's a Kiwi thing. I don't know. But... So okay, so um, that's interesting. Well, what do you? It is interesting. What is your handshake? <laughs> I mean, is it a handshake like, hey, you know? Now, now wait a minute. Is this a New Zealand thing? Might be a New Zealand thing. I don't know. You know, know everybody really lives kind of like a little bit smaller, so you can hunt them down. Or... Well, I. I I've always worked on the principle of a handshake and I've always worked on the principle of, of, uh, of, and, and to be fair, I'm, I'm not dealing with big multi corporates, you know? Right. Uh, yeah. You're I, in a role, dealing, you're in a niche market. You know, these, these huge, like I'm not dealing with law firms and all these kinds of things where, uh, or, you know, the type of suing situations that you guys might face. So uh, uh, in that respect, I work on a handshake. And I work on the principle of I earn your trust. Right. And, Interesting. And, that sounds like 1843 around here. Yeah. Well, look, <laughs> I've, I've, never had times a, in <laughs> I've, I've, I've never had a contract. I've always worked on the on, on the principle of, of, of a handshake. I've always worked on the principle of, of earning a client's trust. And when I earn their trust, I I I, I have that client forever, you know, because I I've worked really, really hard to earn the trust of that client, and to to do a do a good job for them. And when I earn their trust, and I don't ch uh, charge ninety nine design prices either. Okay, 
I don't. You tell them up front what the costs are and then how you handle it when things yep. change. Yes. Yep. So, uh, and, and, and that's just the way I roll. So, have you ever had a problem with that? I know you've never had a problem with that. Yeah, it's, it's like some type. Uh, no, I've never had a problem. So, <laughs> I want to move to New Zealand. I would I'll say we're all moving I know, to New Zealand. Dude. Oh my God. Where people are like, is this, how, is this uh, Hobbit business? Honorable and uh, and they pay their bills on time. Wow! Oh, and they got awesome strawberries. <laughs> well, it's it's just it, it's just the way I am. I I don't like paperwork. <laughs> I I hear you, but I also don't want to be holding the bag because somebody took me for a ride. Yeah, yeah. there's too many horror stories before. here that you hear all the time, and they happen to friends of mine. I've yeah. been very fortunate, I think. I've had anything that's happened uh, was minor, but um, you know, I learned a long time ago to go about things the right way. And I think it's also, it's also the way, even if I'm working with a friend, it's the way to pr preserve a friendship because yeah. I think everybody needs to be on the same page and all the I's need to be dotted and the T's need to be crossed up front so that everybody's on the same page and that we can make sure ensure that things go smoothly i wouldn't want to jeopardize a friendship you know over a project either yeah i i had a i had a i, I worked with a guy recently about a year ago and he sent me i said well do you have some kind of agreement or send me some paper or whatever he sent me a one pager and it was okay i'm gonna do this you're gonna do this and the last line in there was don't be an a-hole i was like yeah and because that was the first thing he said to me he's like he goes, I can't, he goes, I can sum up my, my, my agreement in kind of one phrase. And that's what he said to me. Don't be a you-know-what. And I was like, okay. So I don't know if he's like messing with me. So he sent it off to me. And I was like, wow, okay. And uh, it was a really good working with, with the guy. I mean, he was, really, he was just really right up front and honest and said, okay, this is good and this isn't good. And, you know, I needed his help on something. And uh, it was actually a real pleasure. You know, and it kind of – it wasn't, you know, it wasn't Craig's exactly, you know, like a handshake, but it was pretty close to that. I mean, it was a piece of paper that really meant not much of anything, but that one line kind of stood out for me because, yeah. you know, yeah. it was, it's just yeah. how he operated. You know, he was just a straight out to tell you right to your face exactly what was going on. He wouldn't pull any punches, you know. Look, when, when, I'm, when I'm doing work for friends, it's, you know, it's, it's exactly the same principle. It's, it's about respect. And so when I'm talking about a handshake, you know that handshake represents for me, and it and it, for, for me it re represents re respect for the person that I'm doing the work for, regardless of the friendship. So, in other words, if I'm going to be doing a a, a project for a friend, I treat that project with exactly the same uh, sort of time frames that I would with another project, uh, and and I would expect them to you know, to give me the same sort of feedback and that kind of thing. So it's, yeah, it, it, maybe it's just different. We, we're a small country here and we just... I think of, that plays a, a large part, right, to, to, yeah. to be honest. Sure. I, mean, I wish it could I wish yeah. it could work over here. In fact, I find here in the States that people kind of respect you more if you do approach yeah. it in a business-like way with a contract. Yeah. I, I don't yeah. call it a contract, by the way. I call it a working agreement because it's yeah. really also to educate the client about the work process that I follow, that we are going to follow in partnership as we work together on the project. Again, yep. it's just making sure that everyone is clear up front as to what our roles are, how we're going to move forward. And I think that people respect you more here if you, yeah. you know. Yeah, I, I really, I've only Yeah. So we are getting a little bit off topic just once again, because this is something I'd love to have a separate whole talk about. You know, it's a whole separate kind of, thing that we're getting into. So to help people understand what design is, what more can we tell them? Who wants to raise their hand on this one again and take another stab at it? Because there's something, I mean, you know, we also, let's let's face it, we do make things look great. And that's, yeah. me, that's critically important. I mean, I don't want to deny that, of course. That's why you would come yeah. to a professional designer uh, who can organize information in a way that's clear, that that's crisp that influences but also looks great you know and it fits your branding we have a comprehensive point of view of your entire brand right and how everything fits in we don't just do one-offs necessarily you know they they fit into a larger picture 
and right. that is critically important that is lost you know if you don't work with a professional designer hmm. your design is creating order out of chaos exactly yeah but, and for example uh looking at a looking at a, a logo that looks so simple and so crisp and and, and like i created a logo the other day and 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 the, the the logo was the result of quite a few days of just getting my head around what I was trying to achieve with the logo. Mm -hmm. It was it, and and at the end of it, I looked at it and I and I thought to myself, I've nailed it. You know, as a I, I come from the belief that ninety nine point nine percent of people see good design. So. That if, if they look at it, if you look at it as a designer and you think that's not quite right and you present that to a client, they're not going to like it. And they're going to you know, pick it possibly good too. Design. Which good design. Good design. It, it speaks for itself. And, and people can see rubbish from non-rubbish. And so, if, if generally speaking, so because, I you know, you, I, I sometimes you've got people that... that that are tone deaf too, you know, when it comes when it comes to music. But 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 what I mean is that I I, I do think that that ninety nine percent, like as a designer presenting a good quality design product to to a client, they will see that as good design. So if 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 you present something that isn't, then they they will see that too. But I think more than just presenting and showing it, it also means explaining exactly yeah. how you solve the problem and why this logo works, for example. I mean, we, it could be anything we're talking about. It could be a poster, it could be a website, it could be whatever. But, you know, laying it out, uh, this was the objective. This was the rationale. This is why I was led to this direction and this is why it's gonna work. So they're focusing more on, you know, why it solves a problem rather than how it looks. We've got a question, Paul, from you are, you are crafty. Can you give me an idea if our logo speaks to you? Of it sounds like he's talking about possibly his specific logo. Could, I think could that's you a little bit off the uh, beaten I don't see a logo. I see a, a face avatar. You know what, guys? I think we're going to open this up to Q&A, like the last 15 minutes. Yeah, do you so want me to leave? Does sorry. anybody else want to get on? Does anybody else want to get on a seat? Uh, I somebody, haven't seen yeah, somebody else, else wants my spot. Ask. Would somebody like to uh, like to leave and give it a shot? Somebody else? Alex? Yeah, look, look, I'll, I'll, I'll jump off. Alex Rodriguez? I can jump off, too, because I, I, I have to jump off. But um. And, and, Give me a shout if you want me to jump back on, Paul. Okay, so I'll, I'll just leave the seat open. Okay, so I'll okay. see you guys. I'm not really open to you guys. Really great to meet you in person, by the way. You too, so. Steve. Yes, Stephen. All right, guys. So, um, so we're losing two. Of you. I enjoyed okay. it. I'm gonna All jump right. off as well. So somebody pop in here. Let's hear from you guys. All right, Stephen. Would love to chat more, but we'll do it again some other time. Alex Rodriguez. Hang on, I'm still trying to get off. My mouse just died. Okay, <laughs> I can take you off. Hello. Okay, you're done. Hello, Alex. Welcome. You have no sound right now. I think you have to maybe unmute yourself. Okay, and you are crafty is coming in. I'm not sure what your name is, but we will find out shortly. Welcome to Redesign. Okay. Can oh, you guys hear me? Logo, I guess. Okay. I can hear you. Yeah. Uh, I don't mean to be showing you my logo. I'm not sure if my um, my okay. camera's working on my computer here, but. Uh, All righty. My name is Wayne Kendrick, by the way. It's nice to meet you. Kevin, did you say? No, it's Wayne oh, Kendrick. Wayne, sorry. Okay, great. I have terrible internet. I'm on Cape Cod, and it's uh, it's a little sketchy. Oh, there you go. There you are. How you doing? Good. Yeah, a little bit of Tom Brady going. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> A big Trump supporter, <laughs> I hear. Hey, it's it's better than Alex Rodriguez up in That's Boston. That's going to really no off offense. the topic. <laughs> Alex Rodriguez. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alex Rodriguez. 
You still can't hear you. So I had a uh... no sound. Mm. Yeah, I think he needs a microphone. I don't think he's got a microphone going. All right, well he'll try it again. Anyone else want to jump in in the meantime? There's an open seat. Amy is here. Great. Hello, Amy. She's Hi. trying to come on. Hi there. How are you? Good. Welcome. We've we spoken many Talk times in person. So. <laughs> Hi, Amy. How are Good. you? Good. How are you? I'm good, thanks. You got a little feedback going on. Yeah. So our topic of discussion here today is what is design? So uh, what does design mean to you? To me, as I said, it's a visual representation. Oh, got feedback going on here. Um, yeah, we're getting a little bit of that echo. <laughs> a little bit of feedback there. Yeah. Yikes. Do you, uh, if you have Skype open or another tab open uh, with Blab on it, that might be the problem. So I would just quit out of anything else that has video. You might have a second Blab tab open, which I know sometimes causes these issues. Blab tab. Blab tab. Fab. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me now? Oh. Oh, the aliens have arrived. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to ask you both, uh, if I yeah, could, sure. about um, the, the creation of Logo and how it implements with your brand. Um, I don't want to do any self-promotion stuff here. You are Crafty is an arts and crafts website. And if you go on to Twitter, you can see the logo there. Um, this is our third rendition of the logo and i would just want to make sure that it's kind of pointed and and going to work as far as that's concerned so mm -hmm. welcome back alex hi hey, alex, how's it going can you hear me now i can hear you now yeah. okay awesome so you're saying on twitter we can see it you should be able to see the logo on twitter yes if not you can go to the, the website it's certainly there I stuck it in feedback. Yes. Yeah, we're still yeah. getting feedback there. Amy, do you have a microphone? I just have a headset. So, first of all, I would say going back to the original premise of our talk here, which is what is design, it's a little hard to just comment on a logo without really understanding what it is you're trying to achieve with it. Like, what's your business about? You know, what. Uh, what's the personality um, that you know you're trying to get across? Uh, what's your essence? Uh, what are you trying to express? Um, you know, where does it have to appear? Is it going to have to ever appear really large? Is it ever going to have to um, appear in one color as well as multiple types of colors? Um, you know, does it ever have to be screen printed, or does that have to happen a lot, or be embroidered on a hat? You know, all these. I'm not saying that that appeal. A, applies to you, of course, but you know, those are the sorts of things that I need to know before I design a logo and will also help me understand how to, um, you know, um, look at it and crit critique it. So I'm looking at your logo and yeah, I see, you know, crafty and that nice kind of like italicized, uh, type, um, and the, and the dot you are, I'm a little confused just looking at your name because it says you're you are crafty and then I'm really reading crafty first when I see the logo and I'm reading you are second But it's hard for other people to appreciate what I'm saying here. I think because they're not really seeing what I'm seeing, you know yeah, I don't know that I can put it up here for people to see it. But uh, yeah, I suppose I could, I could try it off my phone, but um, Essentially what we are is we are a, uh, a reselling craft site arts and crafts website um, we do reselling similar to an Etsy kind of thing. So uh, essentially what we wanted to portray was the UR comes up as a tag. So it's you, you are, mm -hmm. and crafty is the, is the focus because you're, you know, you've got some talent, right? You create things, you're passionate about it. And then we post them to the site, et cetera, and sell through the site. So that's basically what the, the logo 
portrays. And we, I just want to make sure that it's, it's hitting the right message. Obviously, if you don't understand the concept behind what the website is, et cetera, then you wouldn't understand necessarily why the logo existed even. But right. that gives you a little bit of an idea. If you look at it closely, you'll see that the UR is actually in a tag. So it looks like it's, you know, like a sale. Okay, you see that doesn't come across though small. And if you're doing a lot right. of social media and your Ike and your uh, profile image is really small, that kind of gets lost. Um, so I would really say that's very good ability also, you know, like I think it should really mm -hmm. clearly read you are crafty. And right now with the your kind of how it is, I almost read that yeah. secondary. Um, okay. Well, you, okay. But, so if the, yeah. if the focus is crafts, then it's okay if you if you see it as secondary, in my opinion. But you're an expert. Yeah. I'm, I'm a I'm a sales guy. So well, the yeah, fact that it says that. craft and you're about crafts, yeah, that's you know that's important. And I think that's so I don't know if if, uh, if people can see that. Uh -huh. Yeah, there. Is there. that a little bit better? Okay. So now you can see a little bit as to and it's actually it's in a circle. That's right off Twitter. So you can see where the tag is, and and actually that's a different logo than we actually have on the website right. because it's well, you know, it's positioned a little bit differently for social media. But. Okay, but it's generally yeah. expressing the same thing. I mean, it kind of looks the same. It might yeah. be a horizontal format or something instead of vertical. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. You know, yeah. there's always uh, ways of doing variations based on the media. You know, um, that can still car carry a consistent identity. So. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. So, Amy, you're okay, back. Sure. Let's give it one more shot here. Does it sound all right now? Yes, it's a lot better. Um, I have, I have a question. Better. We're giving advice over here on the side, too, about <laughs> headphones and things like that. So, I have a question. Do you ever, when you're presenting a logo design, do you do several yep. color options of it, or is it one color that you feel the strongest about? Personally, I usually give a few different options, but um, there's different ways of going. Like sometimes, I will do a logo and present, uh, let's say I present, you know, three or four or even more options on a logo. Usually I try to keep it pared down to only two or three because I think people just get confused if I show too many ideas and they start to try to mix and match and design doesn't really work like that either. So if I'm showing a few different options, I will usually try to keep the colors in the same realm there because I don't want the color to be the determining factor. Because sometimes people might decide that they like a logo because they happen to like blue and green instead of red and orange, you know. Right. Um, and really, at that point, I'm trying to get more of an understanding on the design and how it's, how it solves the problem, rather than getting into a personal uh, opinion situation about color, you know, because right. that gets really subjective. Um, then I will usually do a color analysis and you know, um, and maybe show other color options if it makes sense or if I really feel strongly about a certain direction up front, you know, I might just tweak that a bit or show variations on that general color scheme that I've already established. Sometimes I'll see people doing different colorways in different social media venues. And to me, it weakens the corporate identity because you're not, you don't have one recognizable image that's consistent. Well, I think that that also depends though on the logo and the branding and what you're trying to achieve. Because for example, MTV way back in the early 80s, I think they were probably maybe the first big entity to have different variations on the lo 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 logo, but it always read as MTV. And that went way beyond color. It had to do with pattern. It had to do with a photographic uh, interpretation versus a more graphic or vector type of uh, interpretation. Um, you know, they did everything under the sun. And now you're starting to see companies, corporations that aren't MTV do similar things. And it sort of connotes an idea of innovation, you know, and staying fresh. And, th but it's done in such a way, I mean, it takes, you know, a good hand, but it's done in such a way that it still presents a, uh, a solid brand image, you know, it's a consistent look and feel, even though they're having a little bit of fun with it. So I think, you know, depending on the logo, I think you can have some fun with the color. Other times, if you're a really small guy and, you know, you're not promoting much and a lot of people, you know, you don't have the uh, the big money behind it to create that kind of a brand, 
then maybe it is, you know, uh, wise to set, stay a little safer with the color and make the color also part of your brand. Right. Like okay. Coca-Cola is known, you know, as red. They're they're huge. They have more money than God, right? But they right. also stay with red. You know, it's very right. powerful. And if you saw Home Depot as blue and white, you'd think it was another company that is ripping them off. Right, right. right. It, it, orange is their identity. Right. But I would just be careful of rules because as soon as you like, you know, establish a rule and say, yes, the color should always remain the same, then you're going to find, you know, right away that maybe there are cases where you want to break that pattern too. So. Sure. So how would you define design though, Amy? I know you said visual representation of a concept, right? Is that what you said before? Right. Well, to me, it's telling a story. It's telling who they are, what they do and doing right. it in a way that you can, then there's something like a five second, whatever that number of seconds is, but yes. it's surprisingly short, where you should be able to look at it and tell right away what that company does, what their service is to the public, what you would hire them for. Exactly. And I, and That's I think a great... when you look at the logo, there shouldn't be any question as to what they do. It should be an immediately recognizable concept. Uh, then we're in trouble. I think that's great. <laughs> it's so true. Uh, I also said that. I also saw that stated somewhere else that um, right now our our attention span is less than that of a goldfish. It's actually one point one point one point five seconds you have to capture someone's imagination and attention to get them to read further. It's terrible. I used what to see they said seven seconds on a website before they're off somewhere else. Now we're down to like 1.5 seconds or it's less than a goldfish. So it's a really sad state of affairs, but that points directly to how important it is to, uh, you know, have a design that's clear in just a moment's glance. And it's got to say what it has to say in just that little moment's glance. Otherwise you're sunk. And it also, you know, we live in, in an, a society now where we have so much visual stuff coming at us all the time. That if you're looking at a list of, of a whole you know queue of things that you could read, whether they're news stories, whether they're visual things on a social media feed, whatever it is, you really only have a very short time span to go through and knock out the ones you want to pull out from the rest. So there has to be a visual reason to stay there. Otherwise, you just move on. You look at it for the one, two, three seconds, and you move on. Everything is instant gratification. And if it's not instant, I mean, look at our food now. If it's not done immediately, if you have to wait in a restaurant, you go on Yelp and you bitch about it. So right, that's right. Terrible. The, down, terrible. the downside also is from designers' point of view is that they frequently want have clients who want instant gratification. They don't necessarily feel comfortable with the time that it takes to build a concept or the time that it takes to work something through. They want something to happen very quickly because everything from them that they're seeing is done quickly. So they have trouble realizing that some things take more time to digest and create and come up with the best solution. They also something expect that, perfection. Something that has fed that too, Amy, is uh, you know if you're working for a larger group, uh, the sales guys are evaluated on the short term. So they need to make sales you know, within a month. They don't have time for your design to show that it, it's effective six months or six years down, you know, down, down the line. Um, right. And that's unfortunate, you know, because that's really, I think, fed that problem too. And it comes back to what your first impression is of, of anything that you see, whether you're looking at a logo, whether you're looking at someone who's getting dressed for a job interview. I mean, it's like everything, there's the first impression is the most important, you know, small fraction of time in the whole process. Right, exactly. Um, I was going to say that too. First impressions are critical. Right. I see Kristen is here. Oh my goodness. She says, I'm all of a sudden geeking out. Okay. So, <laughs> hey, you know, I'll jump off here. I, I okay. really appreciate your time. Thanks so much, Paul. Great to meet Thanks you. Thanks for jumping in. Nice to see you too. Let's connect right, on Twitter. You. All right. All right. Sounds great. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. Hey, I wanted to uh, chime in if I if I could on the sure, Alex, topic. I'd like to hear your voice. You're sound, yeah. <laughs> sounding very good right now. <laughs> cool, cool. Thanks, thanks. Great, great talk up to now. Um, uh, designer, uh, you know, I've, I've, I'm familiar with design. I grew up kind of in, uh, in motion design, uh, but uh, that also has its roots in graphic design as well. Um, to me, design is a, uh, a, is a perceptive representation of a concept, right? And, um, and it's uh, it, just a few, a few, about an hour ago, I finished uh, a, blab, a blab I was hosting on creative strategy. And, uh, and the point we were trying to bring home is that um, in, in most everything that we do, there, 
there has to be a, a, a creative goal and a strategic goal, right? And I saw in your title that you have creative strategy in there. Uh, and that, that certainly is the case with design where you have, uh, you know, you have a strategic goal, you have an objective and kind of a path to get there, but you also have creative means to, uh, to uh, build that design in a way that is attractive, that is pleasing, that, that resonates with people. And that all has to do with the creative side. Right. Um, one other thing I wanted to add was that we were talking about um, kind of the uh, the goals of you know clarity and, and whatnot uh, with like a logo or some other kind of identity uh, design, and in in um, in brand identity, you know, you have the in, in the majority of cases you have one of two objectives, which are or two frameworks to build the design. One is the the connotative framework, and one is the denotative framework. So um, in, in the denotative, what you're doing is representing in a very clear, almost literal fashion, what you're trying to say. So if you are a pet store, you'll put a picture of a little dog or a cat or something like that. So you're very, very, very literal in your meaning. Mm -hmm. But in connotative uh, framework, what you're trying to do is elicit emotions, right? You're, you're trying to build identity through what resonates with people. Um, and, and then we can say, like you, you mentioned, for example, the Coca-Cola logo, where it's, it's consistently red, it is consistently that script and things like that. But there's an emotion built with that, the emotion of fun, playfulness, et cetera, et cetera. And that feeds into the recognizability and the identity that is the main, you know, the main- Memorability uh, too, yeah. Yeah, memorability, for absolutely. That. Yeah, yeah. If you can really key into that, um, that's, that's uh, you know, that's kind of like the holy grail, I think. You can, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And if and for and in order for something to be memorable, there there has to be a clear identity. And you were saying, and I agree with you, I want to agree with you, um, that it doesn't necessarily mean doing the same thing again and again and again. It's just right. uh, what is what is that predictable factor? Like, for example, I've got my logo back there, not on purpose, it's, it's right there. It's uh, Yummy Marketing is our is our agency, Y-M-M-Y. -M -M -Y. And our... And our um, that's the logo shape, but within the circle, we'll put in, you know, a photo of a of a of an orange, a photo of a strawberry, a photo of chocolate pudding. Like we'll really rotate it depending on the use. Um, so the the memorability side is just the shape, but the right. actual appearance uh, will change. The color palette will change depending on the use, and we have no problem with that. I mean, it's just one of those things where where uh, where we know that that um, you know the 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 um, it doesn't. Uh, um, Consistency doesn't mean rigidity necessarily. Right. You know? It's all how it's done, you know. Exactly. Con consistency also is boring a lot of times. I, yeah, thing absolutely. You do is put your audience to sleep, you know. Exactly. Kristen, yeah. I got to say hi to you. Welcome to the redesign hi. community here on the lab. <laughs> Thank you so much. This is so cool. Like we've been, yeah. you know, some communities together, and like you're just like the nicest human being. So like I'm waking you up. Yeah. Thanks. Well, so are you. Here. Yeah, Craig, uh, Craig and Mary uh, were, um, you know, talking to me about maybe starting a blab, and I was thinking along the same lines. So they gave me the little maybe extra nudge that I needed to actually pursue it. And I think oh, it's a I love them for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very so cool. many questions. Yeah. So, um, Kristen, let's bring you in here. Design. What does that mean to you? Oh, okay. <sighs> simple yet com complex. It's uh, it's a, a, I think it's a deceptively simple question. Because there's a lot more to it than meets the eye. Agree. Oh yeah, for sure. I don't even. I'm like trying to think. Like that is a very difficult question. Uh, it's kind of like, what is art? Spent like four right. years in college yeah. trying to define that, <laughs> and I still graduated with nothing. Another <laughs> half hour to uh, knock off those questions. <laughs> yeah, design. Uh, it's a, a formulation of putting together ideas and putting it out visually. It's my best. <laughs> Yeah, it's about ideas, right? Mm. But it's also about ideas that achieve, right? Some sort of objective. Right, yeah. Oh, we lost Alex. Oh. <laughs> okay. Bye. Paul. He was like, oh, she doesn't have it. I don't <laughs> yeah, okay. Paul, Thank you I have a question. Sorry, <laughs> Sorry I dropped out. Yay. Paul. <laughs> yes, Amy. Hi. Do you find that people's recognizing the importance of design has changed over time, like in terms of logo design? Do they see how important that is? Um, especially as they're using that to represent their company more and more. In Are you talking companies? about a specific like client who might over time realize how powerful a logo is capable of being, or do you mean in so society in general? You know, 
Um, society in general, because now, I mean, just generally, it, it used to be when they had a logo, they would use that logo for their corporate identity, yeah. whether there was a sign or whether there was stationary or whether there was other ways they would put it out. But now, with social media being everywhere and everyone being a part of it, that logo gets used in exponentially in many different ways. Mm -hmm. So do you find that that logo becomes increasingly important to people, or do I, they understand that? I, I personally think it's never been more important. However, um, I, I would answer your question in two ways, because I would say yes and no. I think that more and more people than ever, yes, are having logos developed because you know they're now on social media, the personal branding thing is so important, and uh, you know, every, Everybody and their cousin now has a logo or some kind of an I identity on, on online, but they're not necessarily, um, you know, creating the types of logos uh, and the type of design uh, for a powerful brand that I talk about. You know, um, a lot of times they are running off either doing it themselves, which is you know fine for a lot of people, um, or they're you know paying a five dollar logo service to uh, knock something out or they're crowdsourcing a logo for free and picking the best you know choice that they get um, just based on I'm not sure half the time I think it's based on air not really a defined set of objectives the way we like to do as professionals um, right. so in that in that respect yes I think logos you know are, are are having more attention than they've ever gotten on the other hand uh, I think that there's also a, a certain lack of respect that's being fed at the same time, you know, and um, and uh, a muddying of the waters, so to speak, where, uh, you know, people are having a harder time understanding just what a logo is capable of doing for a company uh, because they're just running off and doing this quickie little, you know, thing that, um, that uh, might, you know, be some sort of a symbol that they're able to use, but it doesn't really, uh, define what the logo is to my eyes. Right. And, and so unfortunately, the people on the internet that offer logos for 10 bucks, you know, they tell people who they, th they think that's a logo and they believe it's a logo that it really could be so much better than right. what they're getting, at, you know, with these quickie <sighs> services. Right. If you do a logo the right way uh, and create this brand image, I mean, it can extend. It can even be the, the, uh, impetus or the inspiration for everything that comes after you know it doesn't just have to be something that's slapped on in a corner somewhere you can create it and evolve it into a whole sort of you know image identity that's really powerful and uh and really you know sings the song of your company every time people see it no matter you know what marketing touch point they might be interacting with so i would almost think that like if like say you're just starting out and you don't have the money to like you don't have the money yet to get a logo from someone who can really delve into who you are and who like understands design it's probably better to use your face i would think like i don't know like i mean yeah, I, I, use, say, yeah, I use a, a logo maker and yeah like it does nothing like it doesn't do anything <laughs> like yeah. I, I made the very best one that I could from the tools that were available and I think my face is better. <laughs> yeah, I think, <laughs> I think if you're talking primarily about social media, which, you know, it's all about facial recognition and one on one engagement. Nothing is more powerful than your face, I think, because that's what people relate to, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. and if you're not really ready to invest in a logo and do it the right way. Um, I would do something very generic, you know, and maybe just a nice font or something or a nice typeface. I shouldn't use the word font because they're really called typefaces, which could be a whole separate discussion. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, you know, a nice typeface. And then once you're ready to maybe really establish your image, go about the right way. That's what I would recommend because if you create, if you create some graphic, you know, that is really off the mark and you, be, you start to become known for that, okay? So maybe it does have a benefit in some way because you're becoming known for that, but it's really not maybe, you know, achieving the objectives that you really need to achieve. Then you're kind of stuck with it because it's really hard for the little guy to rebrand himself. You're already, you've already established, you know, a certain image for yourself. It took a lot of work to get there. And now how are you going to suddenly, you know, slide that whole audience or community or, 
you know, whoever it might be into this new identity all of a sudden, you're going to create a lot of confusion and you're going to undo all that hard work that you already put into uh, setting the groundwork for yourself. So I would tread yeah. very carefully there. For sure. And I think that there's like, like, you know, like probably designers would like to work with people who are not um, just like the give me $200. That's all I have to offer um, kind of companies. You want someone who actually has a budget. Um, however, with the way that our world is shaping, everyone has a personal brand. And right. so it's becoming increasingly important for people to understand the the pros and cons to what they do and how they do it. Yes, it is. And that's why I think it's also important coming back to the uh, main point of our discussion today, which is understanding what design is. You know, it's not just slapping something graphically onto your photograph or your company and calling it a debt. You know, uh, it's really much more than that. And uh, everything always starts with understanding, right? Whether we're talking about society at large or design. So, or with a question. Right, with a question. So yeah, anyway, we're, trailing, oh, oh, I'm so time is up. So okay, I. Oh no! I, <laughs> I didn't even get to my great questions that Mary brought me in on. <laughs> Our time is up. It's now uh, an hour and one minute. So we actually went over over the allotted time. Uh, but I'd like to thank you all for coming. And um, everybody that joined us here on the side, I'm sorry we didn't get to all of your questions. Um, but uh, we can keep the conversation going over there on the side, too. So that doesn't have to end. So anyway. Great meeting you, Paul. Until next week, OK? I think we're going to try to do these every week. So it's not the end. Great meeting you all too. Kristen, Amy, <laughs> Alex, everybody else that joined in. Bye-bye.